First, we are going to create our grommet artwork in Photoshop. What I've done here is I've created a circular shape with an inner diameter of one and a half inches and an outer diameter of two and a half inches. I have my texture image, my normal map image, and my displacement map image all created here. And I have saved them out as individual files. In all cases, the image size is the same. Two and a half inches wide by two and a half inches high, and the resolution is 72 pixels per inch. This will ensure that when we import it into Clo, it will be the size that we need it to be. Next, I'm going to go into Clo. Prior to creating my, my avatar here, I have created a curtain rod uh, avatar itself uh, from, in this case, in a, an outside 3D application that is just very simply a long circular rod. You could create it in Clo as well with a circular pattern piece that you give a very, very high um, uh, additional thickness rendering uh, and then export it as an OBJ. So now here is our fabric piece that I have created, which we are going to use for our curtain. As you can see, it is 36 wide by 40 inch, 48 inches wide. This curtain with grommets that we are creating is simply an example. It is not an actual full uh, curtain to uh, specific, uh, uh, specific specifications. It's simply an example of how to get, create grommets and put them into Clo. Now I'm going to add some internal lines horizontally that are going to help me not only place where I want the grommets to go, but will allow me to fold this pattern piece so that um, it will uh, I can easily place it on the curtain rod. I'm going to start with my edit pattern tool and I'm going to shift select the two outer segments. I'm going to right click and choose Distribute Internal Line Between Segment. For this example, we're going to put in six grommets. I'm going to put in 11 internal lines. Five of the lines will be fold lines. The other ones will be lines that will be markers for where our grommets are going to go. Next, I'm going to go and I'm going to in our fabric, the Clo fabric library, I'm going to uh, I'm going to change the fabric of the uh, curtain itself temporarily to something that has more stiffness to it. Uh, specifically, the trim full grain leather option here, which I'm going to uh, drag right onto the fabric in the object browser. Then I'm also going to select my pattern piece and add strengthen as well. I'm going to make sure that my internal lines are visible here so that I can see what is going on. Next, I'm going to offset two internal lines from the top. Right click with the Edit Pattern tool, choose Offset as Internal Line, and I'm going to uh, offset the distance as four inches and two offsets. The first line here it will be the placement of where we want the grommet to be uh, placed. Now I'm going to look at my, uh, my internal lines here. And I'm going to fold certain lines to a spe very specific number. So lines 2, 6, and 10 I'm going to fold to 30 degrees using the Fold Arrangement tool. So I'm going to do these manually so that when I fold them, I have these very extreme angles here. I've got 35, uh, I can fold just a little bit more, I've got 32, that is good. Now, I'm going to do this on every other 
the two, the number two, the number six, and the number ten internal lines. But on the number four and eight, I'm going to I'm going to fold those so that that fold angle is 320 degrees, or very close to 320. There's 320. So that was fold line or internal line number two. Here is internal line number four. And you can see here is my fold angle here in the property editor. I'm not too concerned about the distortion here on the, on the fabric piece itself. We will address that in a minute or so. I'm gonna fold this one back so that it is close to 330. 332 is okay. And finally, number 10 here, I'm going to fold this over so that this is 30 degrees. Okay, the idea here is that when we put this on the side and we're able to look at this, these internal lines line up so that when we cut our hole through this for our grommets, that those lines line up almost exactly. And if you want, you can be very, very specific about these numbers if you want to uh, uh, take a couple minutes to make sure that they are perfectly 30 degrees. Um, the distortion, distortion here on the bottom here is not too bad. I'm most concerned about what's going on up at the top. Um, if you would like to quickly sort this out, what you could do is very quickly uh, tap your spacebar twice so that uh, turn it on and tr or turn simulation on and off really quickly and that will help the distortion a little bit But you do not have to do that as long as your top part is okay um, that, That's what you would have to worry about Okay now up here on my on the top of my curtain starting right here where these these first two internal lines come together I'm going to create an internal ellipse right on this intersection here that is one and a half inches in diameter okay that is the important person the important thing here is that the internal ellipse is one and a half inches in diameter I'm going to now do the same thing in the same place, but this circle now, the diameter is going to be two and a half inches. You should have two ellipses there uh, on your curtain um, right on that first uh, intersection of those two internal lines. Now what I want to do is I want to put, uh, the, I want to create openings on the internal line at number four number six, number eight, and number 10, or I'm sorry, three, five, seven, nine, and 11, okay? I want five more openings here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this ellipse, right click, copy, then right click, paste, hold down my shift key so that it comes perfectly perpendicular to where uh, the first one was and right click so that the interval is six inches Oops, my apologies six inches That puts this circle directly on this internal line and we need five more of these one two three four five Okay, that gives us six openings here on our internal uh, internal lines now I'm going to uh, um, double click on this first one here on the two and a half inch circle right click and say cut I am then going to whoops I want to move the whole thing out I'm going to move this whole piece out of here okay and what I'm going to do here is I am going to select the inner circle and I'm going to say convert to whole. And then I'm also going to make sure that these internal lines are out of the center of 
this piece here. This is the, uh, the we will build our grommets from this piece here, and I will address those internal lines again uh, soon. I'm going to reset the uh, 2D arrangement in the 3D window and just make sure that it is out of the way. Whoops. Make sure that it is out of the way so that we can uh, continue to work. I am then going to select these two inch holes here and I am going to say create convert to hole. Now we have these internal lines showing here. Okay, we're going to need to remove these internal lines um, so that we can uh, create uh, our um, uh, insert our grommets. Okay, um, we can either select these internal lines now here and delete them. Okay, or what we can do is rather than choose convert to whole. If I say cut here, this will cut those shapes out and take the internal lines with them. Okay? So now we have our grommet, which I am going to um, uh, uh, temporarily deactivate. Oops. I'm going to select the whole piece here, deactivate, and I'm going to again reapply the strength in here to our curtain piece. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to put in my curtain rod, my simple curtain rod. I'm going to add this to the workspace. Okay, so here's our curtain rod. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up so that the curtain rod goes through these holes. And this is what I was speaking about before. Okay. So I want to make sure that this curtain rod is going perfectly through these holes. Okay. So whether uh, the curtain rod is straight, the curtain is a little um, tilted horizontally, so I can rotate either actually to get these to line up a little bit better. And again, this is just for positioning to begin with. So your placement of your curtain rod should look something like this. Now let's make our actual curtain rod, or I'm sorry, our actual grommet piece so that we can uh, make it not only look like a grommet, but then function uh, with, with your curtain pieces, with your curtain itself. I'm going to add a, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the graphics to my, to my grommet piece. Uh, and here are the, the, the grommet, piece of grommet artwork that I showed at the beginning. I'm going to right click and say add as graphic. And I'm going to click, I'm going to have to click on the outside of this opening to begin with. Because it has to be, to place it you have to click on a pattern piece. And as you can see, there is my correct measurement of two and a half inches by two and a half inches. Once this is now placed, I can move this so that it, is, that it is in the exact spot that it should be. Okay. Next, I'm going to go into my, uh, my property editor under the materials of this selected piece of artwork, and I'm going to apply the normal map and the displacement map in their corresponding places. And I'm going to raise the edge of or the amount of the displacement map uh, to three.
I am then going to select the pattern piece itself. Okay, I was working on the artwork previously. I'm going to select the pattern piece itself. And I'm going to change the particle distance to three. And if you get this warning, you can just bypass that. That's perfectly fine. It's just a warning saying that it's smaller than five millimeter particle distance. I am then going to also use my edit pattern tool and I'm going to select both the outer part of the circle and the inner part of the circle. And I'm going to actually add elastic here to the ratio of 100. This technique is, uh, is similar to what in the fashion what was called Mobilon tape. And this will, when you add a list elastic to the ratio of 100, this will keep those lines from, um, from stretching so that you will not distort, uh, so that your grommet will not distort. Now if you notice here in my window, my grommet does not appear to have artwork on it. Okay, That is because we're currently looking at the back of the grommet. This is the front of the grommet. So what we need to do is we need to again select the graphic here and tell it in the graphic configuration options in the property editor to be on both faces. So now we can see that that grommet has the artwork on both faces. And we can also tell the material type to be metal. Finally, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the fabric library and I'm going to go in back down to my trims again and I'm going to add trim fusible hardware to my object browser here. And I am going to tell this, I'm going to assign that trim hardware to that fabric piece. And I'm also going to uh, make the material type on that piece metal so that the fabric piece itself is metal. And then I am also going to, on this pattern piece, I'm going to add solidify with the strength strength at 100. I'm also going to add a, uh, a rendering thickness of 1 here just to give my grommet a little bit of thickness. Now we added elastic to the uh, outside of uh, outside and inside of our grommet. I'm going to do the same thing for the openings on the curtain. For each of these openings. I'm going to shift select all of them so then I can then add the elastic at the ratio of 100. So here we have our curtain folded, our, our curtain rod in place, and we have one grommet created. What I'm going to now do is I'm going to make five copies of this grommet. I'm going to copy, paste, just like we did with the internal lines to create the openings. I'm going to right click in, uh, instead of left click. I'm going to tell it again, six inches uh, interval, and I need five copies and click OK. I'm going to select these, uh, these grommets here, all of them. I'm going to go down to my simulation properties. And note again, there's my my particle distance of three that we want that we changed it to. This should be changed. I changed my rendering thickness to zero. I am going to change my thickness for co my collision thickness to zero, so that this um, does not so that these 
uh, will fit into the, the holes we made and around the curtain rod uh, well. I'm then going to also select my curtain and I'm going to temporarily freeze the curtain. I'm now going to use the free sewing tool to sew my grommets into their corresponding openings. So now we can see that all of our grommets have been created, have the same specification, and they have been sewn in place. I'm sorry, they've been sewn to the place where they need to be. I am now going to select them and right click on the gizmo and say superimpose side. This then places my grommets into the holes where they need to be. Again, be mindful of how the curtain rod is going through the center of these circles. We want to make sure that they go through the center but they do not interact with the curtain rod itself. So if it still seems to be um, off a little bit in terms of uh, getting close to touching things, you can adjust the uh, how these are, uh, uh, how the curtain is laid out or even you can also rotate the curtain rod if necessary. Okay, so at this point basically you're at the spot where you're ready to simulate this for the first time and uh, see how this looks. What I'm going to do here though is I'm going to actually uh, unfreeze the curtain and then I will simulate. But before I simulate, I'm going to select my avatar here and check to see the settings of the avatar. Um, so I've selected my rod, there's the avatar. My skin offset is very, very high. So I'm going to reduce this to approximately 3. And then just for good measure, I'm going to change the uh, material type to this to metal as well. And if it's too dark, in this case I, my avatar was a dark gray, I could change this to a lighter color so that this will then look like metal. From here, um, you are pretty much done in terms of creating and inserting the grommets, and it's now just making your curtain look more realistic. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simulate. And I will stop. And so there are my grommets on my curtain rod in my curtain. I'm going to remove strengthen and then I am going to again go into my library and I'm going to put a different fabric in the curtain. I'm going to change it to some I'm going to change it to uh, cotton heavy twill, which is a little bit obviously close to what you would actually use for a curtain. My thick textured surface is on. I can then turn off my internal lines as well. Turn on high quality render and I will simulate again. Now I'm going to select my curtain and change my particle distance to 5. And my additional thickness collision I will change to 1. And I will
will simulate again. This will take a little bit longer, obviously, because now this is a, a more high resolution uh, particle distance. And so there you have your curtain that is uh, has curtain uh, has a curtain rod through it and has grommets. Now, how you get this to drape realistically is really based on what your curtain will look like. Um, you can soften the folds. You can add in a lot. You could have had a lining in there. You could have some. Um, uh, you could have a uh, some trim at the top that adds some stiffness. It's completely up to you. But here is your final uh, curtain uh, rod. Uh, simulation. As you can see if I zoom in close here um, there is my curtain with the thickness of my curtain rod. I could make these thicker if I wanted to. If I make these thicker here, if I say make these additional thickness with rendering, if I make this four instead of one, uh, what I would do is also uh, turn off uh, curved side geometry here. So if you notice by default curved side geometry is on, I'm going to uncheck that so that these have flat sides here on my curtain.